repeat, these measures are tough. They're designed to save lives, but they will cost livelihoods. Stage four restrictions come into effect for businesses from today. All of those declared non-essential, such as retail, are closed, while others, such as construction, have had to severely limit their workforces. As well, anyone heading to work from today will have to carry one of these. It's a permitted worker permit, and it's an affirmation by the employer that the employee is, an, is performing an essential service and is going to work. Anyone not carrying one of these or who anyone who lies on the document faces some pretty hefty penalties going forward. Now, even today with the restrictions taking effect, there is still a large degree of uncertainty within the business community about just which businesses are essential and which are not. Business groups calling on the government to establish a dedicated communications unit to answer all of their questions going forward. As well, there have already been calls to ease restrictions on some sectors, including supermarket warehouses uh, amidst fears that we could see uh, shortages on our shelves if they're reduced to a third of their workforce from the weekend as planned as well. Construction groups are warning of incalculable job losses if tradies are unable to work across multiple work sites. Now, all of this comes after Victoria recorded its darkest day of the pandemic. 725 new cases and 15 deaths amidst the fatalities. A man aged in his 30s, Australia's youngest coronavirus victim. And this comes after well, four weeks after Melbourne was placed under stage three restrictions those apparently not having much effect on bringing the numbers down. Many across Victoria hoping that this next round, this tougher round, will have a greater effect on the virus. And Pat, stage four has even delayed an inquiry into Victoria's hotel quarantine program. Yeah, that's right, Pete. The uh, hotel inquiry was due to call its first witnesses to the stand today, but it's now been delayed by several weeks as part of the stage four restrictions as those running the inquiry scramble to set up uh, remote hearings. Uh, now, yesterday, an emergency hearing was called to discuss all of that, and in it, uh, the chairperson... Uh, Jennifer Cote, a former court justice, had something pretty interesting to say. We know for weeks the Premier has been avoiding questions on the botched hotel quarantine program, simply pointing to the fact that there's an inquiry underway and he didn't want to prejudice anything the inquiry might find. Well, Chairperson Cote has said that this is not a royal commission, it's not a judicial inquiry, and there's nothing to uh, prejudge here. There's nothing prohibiting any of these government ministers or even the Premier from answering questions from journalists on the botched program. We know infection breaches from the hotel quarantine program in Victoria are responsible for all of Victoria's second wave of cases. That's according to the first hearing from the inquiry. So Victorians very interested in getting some answers out of the Premier. Apparently he's got nothing more to hide behind. So it will be interesting to see if he does answer these questions going forward. Okay, Pat Murrell, thank you.